Kevin, you, you feel like tonight's the kind of game that you, know, you guys fought through it, and, and because you fought through it, it can kind of maybe get you going back the other way, just the fact that you were able to overcome maybe not playing well the first half? Fought to just not just not playing well maybe in that first half? Yeah, uh, I know a lot of people uh, expect us to be great every night, and uh, that's a great standard to set. But some nights we're going to be in a, we're gonna be in a slugfest. Some nights we're going to struggle to score. Some nights we're going to turn the ball over. Uh, I don't think we sh it's something that we should all be up in arms about. Uh, but once we start seeing, this, once we start struggling, we can't uh, we can't get in our own way. We just got to keep playing. And I think tonight we did a good job of just playing off our instincts and not worrying about if we make a mistake. You know, when we make one or two mistakes, we start trying not to make a mistake the next play instead of just playing. You know what I'm saying? So tonight we just just played, played off our instincts. Guys did what they did best, which is play their games, and we came out and got a solid one. Kevin, but how much fun is that when you do start rolling and the dunks are coming and the ball's moving and you're getting transition points after stops? And it, it does look a little more like the team we're used to seeing. Yeah, like, you, like I said, it's not going to be that way all the time. You know, uh, Teams are getting better. Teams are teams know what we want to do, and they're not just going to let us get out in transition or shoot a bunch of threes or get dunks and you know and, and off our cuts. They're going to be a little physical with us. They're going to um, try to shoot good shots on their end, so we won't get out in transition and run. So when you don't see that, it's not a problem. It's just that we're going to have to shift how we play and change how we play. And I think we can pivot um, throughout the game, throughout the season, throughout the stretch where we might have to slow it down a bit. Uh, we might have to shoot less threes and throw it in the post to D-West or Dre or me or Dot and try to figure our offense that way to loosen them up a bit, and then our three-point game will work. So, you know, it's it's about just figuring out different ways to play, and we got such a talented group that we can play in different ways. And so it, all, it doesn't have to always be a 121 to 103 game or 140 or we hit 15 threes and everybody just – excited in arena sometimes it's going to be a 95 to 85 game and be prepared for that as fans and as media members that sometimes it might not be the fast-paced game that we want but that's 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 what makes us a great team we could play either way all right guys so the warriors just got done playing against the spurs game one of this playoff series it's probably one of the best series you guys are going to watch for this playoff so if you ain't been watching this game y'all want to go watch this game but <laughs> Anyways, man, before I get into this video, real quick, just want to say down in the description below, there's a link to my Facebook. If you guys want to learn about investment information, go ahead and send me a message. If you want to know how to turn your money into more money, go ahead and send me a message. But anyways, back to what we're talking about here. So Warriors are without Steph Curry. Literally, Steph Curry is what makes this team. He's like the glue of this team. That doesn't mean Kevin Durant ain't a baller. All right, you know, when we talking Kevin Durant, my man Kevin Durant puts up these numbers. But without Steph Curry, the Warriors have been struggling. You've seen since he's been out. I think it's been, well, it hasn't been quite a month. I don't think it has anyway. But the Warriors were struggling to win against some of these teams. And they were getting, like, destroyed, just completely demolished. I mean, their last regular season game was, I believe, against the Jags. I think that was their last one. And they just got absolutely dismantled without Steph Curry. Now, the Jazz are a great team, but, you know, I expect the Warriors to do a little better, man. Like, come on now, what's going on with this team? Kevin Durant can't be required to lead the team by himself because without Steph Curry, the Warriors aren't accustomed to doing what they're typically doing in the offense, and that's giving the ball to Steph Curry. He spreads the defense thin. If Steph Curry's not open getting double team, he could pass to Klay Thompson. He could pass to Durant. That's how this offense functions because when you got to focus on two high level high priority superstar players it's going to make someone open if neither of those two players are open someone else is going to get open and have a big night draymond green's been struggling without curry clay thompson's been struggling without curry you just see what a difference having that one extra superstar player does for this warriors team so anyways guys after the game kevin durant just talked about how he wants to win this series and he knows he has to do it without Steph Curry about how his leadership he wants to elevate it to a new level without Steph Curry basically become the leader of this team and lead the Warriors to a victory over the Spurs and they got to do that because if they don't you know find a way to win against this Spurs team the whole series then you know they're not going to get a chance to make their playoff run obviously 
but that's not the issue here it's that you know they need to figure out a way to win with durant because if they don't when steph curry comes back let's say they do win this series when steph curry comes back you know durant still got to kind of be leading his team steph curry's got to come back and get rhythm so he's not just going to come in game one at least i don't think and drop 40 points i can't see that happening maybe he'll do that but i can't see it happening you know i feel like the first maybe game or two he's going to struggle to get in rhythm then everything's going to be good they're still going to need kevin durant to go out there and kind of possess those leadership abilities at least for one or two games after curry comes back so it's interesting kevin durant's talked about the spurs earlier in the year he has mentioned some strong things about the spurs but they're all positive with things like you know he feels the spurs are a great team he feels like the spurs are capable of you know going far places it's just they've had a lot of injuries this year and you know that's going to affect your team so anyways guys i just want to talk about this today because warriors i think have a chance to win the nba finals but it's going to depend on a lot of different things it's going to depend on if kevin durant can lead this team in this series against the spurs because if he can't playoff runs over anyways guys that's all i got for today if you guys are new to this channel make sure you guys subscribe and that's all i got for today's video Stay fresh. I'm out. Peace. All right. What's up, everybody? What we're going to talk about today is uh, five things about LeBron James that you don't know about. Maybe considered a secret. You can call it what you want to. But uh, uh, we'll go with uh, number one. It happens to be with uh lebron james and it involves the olive garden i was victim of this situation if that's what you want to call it but anyhow uh he comes into the olive garden with his mother his whole entourage of people cousins nephews grandmas you name it they were there and announces that he's gonna foot the bill for everyone well let me tell you what when it came time to pay, and we go to get out of there, I end up paying for my own bill. So you tell me, where is it that he said he was going to do that? I mean, you ask me, that's pretty twisted. I mean, I could see if he didn't say he was going to do that. I didn't uh, expect him to pay our bill, but if you're going to say you're going to do something, you better do it. That's how I feel about it. So, think what you think of it. But that's uh, definitely something that not most people know about him. And uh, I guess number two would be, uh, you know what, before I even say number two, let me just let everyone know that I'm from Akron. So the things that I'm telling you are things that I know, uh, you know, right from personal experience. And uh, that, that being said, number two <clears throat> would fall under... The fact that he plays for Cleveland, but yet I've seen him walk around town and everywhere else with jerseys from other teams. Now, here's how I feel. I've seen actors and, you know, athletes wear uh, other team logos and, and, and whether it be a hat or a shirt, whatever. But if you're a current player, you're playing for a team, how in the hell? You're going to wear a jersey from two other teams. I've seen them with the Heat, the Lakers. I mean, come on. I mean, what's he trying to say about, you know, by wearing them? Is that just, you know, him wearing that jersey for the hell of it? Or is he trying to say something? I mean, granted, the uh, Lakers jersey was a Magic Johnson. But it still just seems a little weird to me that he does that i don't know if anyone else has seen him wearing that kind of stuff but it's there he's done it i synced it my own two eyes and uh i'll go with number three here just rolling right along number three would be that he's got that big contract that big deal with nike right so i'm thinking and maybe maybe some of you are thinking different than me but i'm thinking if you got a nike deal that should all you be wearing sporting your shoe the brand that supports you that's how i feel but anyhow he's even done it in a game 
and I don't know that anyone's even talked about it, but this some I've seen wearing the old Ewans. I'm talking the ones with the pump on the tongue. 